Hi everybody, welcome to a video with exam revision. My name is Kate and today what I'm going to go through is some exam tips and advice for Leaving Cert or New Level Maths um, for the 2023 Leaving Cert. Okay, so we're going to look at the structure of the paper and also give some hints and tips along the way. Okay, so first we look at exam structure and timing. So um, as I hope you know, the Leaving Cert Ordinary Level Maths is split up into two papers. So we have paper one and paper two. Um, both papers are laid out the same, which is nice and handy. So they both have a section A, which is worth 150 marks. These are your shorter style questions. Okay, so they're usually divided up into a part A, B and C. Um, they may also be further subdivided. Um, but you have six questions. They're each worth 35 marks and you have to pick five to answer. Okay, um, so you have a little bit of choice there. And then moving on to section B, these are your longer style questions. Um, there could be five or six parts in each and often they continue on. Um, sometimes there's a little bit more of a story to them. So they're kind of more your real life applications. Um, there's four questions, 50 marks each, and you need to answer three. OK, and that's the same for paper one and paper two. Um, so there's 300 marks in each paper. You have two and a half hours to do each paper. So for timing, if you have a 30 mark question, it should take a max of 15 minutes. If you have a 50 mark question, it should take a max of 25 minutes. Now, I would usually say to cut that down a little bit, um, just so you have time at the end to go back through it. But what tends to happen is with your confident questions, so I'd be suggesting that you make algebra one of your confident topics, and hopefully then the algebra question won't take you the full 15 minutes, so you'll be able to spend more time on the questions you find a little bit trickier. Okay, but basically for the structure of your section A and section B, and you can leave one question out from each, which does give us a little bit of choice. Now, that choice isn't as useful maybe as it is in some other subjects, because a lot of the math topics overlap and you might need algebra to answer the functions question or um, I don't know what else overlaps some algebra to answer patterns as well. Things like that. We'll have a look at the overlapping topics. So um, I won't necessarily be um, suggesting you leave out any of those major topics. OK. So paper one and paper two, so there's topics that are um, divided between the papers. So on paper one, you have your algebra, you have your what I call financial maths, you have your number systems, which is all like your, what is a real number, what is an integer, um, your rounding and scientific notation also comes into that. Um, you have your indices, which I would link to algebra, you have your number patterns, complex numbers, functions and calculus. Okay, now Luckily, these kind of go in pairs. So I'd put algebra and indices. I'd be learning those together. OK, um, complex numbers is a standalone topic. Um, number patterns is fairly standalone. It links up with algebra. Then functions and calculus are extremely linked. When they come up, they usually come up together. OK, um, so that's your paper one. The long questions are often so your section B are often functions and calculus um, patterns and your financial maths as well, okay? Um, but they can also come up in your section A. Now, for paper two, then you move on, you have your area and volume questions. Again, they can be short or long questions, depending on the question. Probability and statistics, geometry, and I just put in your constructions there, They're technically geometry as well, but sometimes people forget about them. Then you have the coordinate geometry, which is at the line and the circle, and trigonometry, okay? Um, coordinate geometry, the line and the circle, sometimes they can be separate questions, sometimes they can be mingled in together. OK, um, statistics is a big one. We'll be looking at that in a second for um, a section B question, as is applied measure can also often be a section B question along with trigonometry. OK, so that's your paper one and paper two. There is a little bit of overlap. So, for example, algebra comes into everything. OK, so wherever you have algebra, um, like algebra comes into all of these things as well. So you can't avoid your algebra. Um, so that is one thing that you need to have for definite. OK, um, but as I said, with maths, often the questions you might get a um, geometry question that has a little bit of coordinate geometry in it or a trigonometry question that has a bit of coordinate geometry in it either. OK, um, so it is quite hard to leave out topics, but we will go through some of, I guess, the topics that you definitely shouldn't be leaving out. OK, so now let's just have a quick look at our common and predictable questions. OK, so my favourite question on the whole two papers is the complex number question. OK, it's very predictable. It's a high scoring question on paper one. 
okay what i like about complex numbers is it's really a very isolated chapter so it's hard for them to bring much else into it okay a little bit of algebra they can put into it but other than that it's very isolated okay um it usually starts with a plotting question then you need to know you're multiplying um there's usually a division question in it as well that's usually towards the end of the question so it's a nice if you look at the papers it's nice it's always there and it is always follows the same format okay and people tend to do quite well in that question Okay, then our other particular question is algebra. I would encourage everyone to be really confident with your algebra, okay, and not leave that to the last minute um, because it is your basis for everything. So remember your simultaneous equations, your minus b formula, they pop up all over the place, fractions. So focus on your algebra, particularly the common exam topics. So for example, the ones I mentioned there, simultaneous equations always come up, simplifying fractions, etc. Okay, then I suppose your two other nearly guarantees is functions and calculus. That is quite often a long paper on section B. Now, it may not look like a functions question. It may not be f of x, but it will be a functions question. It might be about heart rate or the number of bacteria, okay, or the price of something, okay? Um, again, a lot of the time you're asked to plot something. You're asked to figure it out. You might be at time after two seconds and you'll be subbing in two into an equation, okay? So it's quite predictable and it's always there in the long questions as well as the short questions. And then in paper two, a long statistics question is also extremely common for paper two. Okay. Um, again, you can bring in your hypothesis test there. That's very common doing out a graph. So a stem and leaf plot, a bar chart, all of those things are very common for a long statistics question. Okay. So when I'm studying, these would be, now this is not everything, but these would be my non-negotiables. Okay. These would be the questions that I would definitely be aiming to do very well in. Uh, practice loads of past questions and hopefully you'll start to see that there are lots of patterns in them okay so they always repeat themselves okay now when you're studying a lot of people um find the math scores quite i guess it's a big course it takes a long time um and there's a lot to it so what we're going to look at is just some overlapping topics that might help to um condense the learning a little bit Okay, so I'm going to start with simultaneous equations. Now, on the junior cert course, there's two types, or sorry, the leaving cert course, there's two types of simultaneous equations. So there's kind of the straightforward ones where you, you did for junior cert, um, and you also have the linear and nonlinear ones where there's like an x squared or a y squared in it. Okay, I have these as an overlapping topic because it can come up in algebra as a straightforward solve this simultaneous equation. It can come up in coordinate geometry for the point of intersection of lines or of a circle in a line. And it can also come up in patterns. OK, so simultaneous equations, super important. If you do that, you can kind of nearly tick off three questions. OK, then scientific notation, rounding and significant figures. I put these into the same bubble. OK, this could come up in paper one or paper two. And it's just how you write your answer. OK, so with that extra couple of minutes you've left at the end, if the question says round two decimal places, double check that you have done that. So if you've done all the hard work up until then, it's kind of annoying if you miss the last couple of marks. OK, plotting points it sounds a little basic, but it will get you a lot of marks. Remember, the easy parts, the parts A's of the question, or they may not necessarily be easy, but they'll be more straightforward. They count for a lot of marks. OK, so it's really important you're getting those plotting points. It comes up in functions. It comes up in coordinate geometry, complex numbers, statistics in your um, scatter graphs. So that comes up in lots of places. And then the minus B formula pops its head up always somewhere as well okay so these topics if you're trying to cut down a little bit these are important topics they will come up in every topic so if you learn your simultaneous equations well once in algebra when you come across them then in coordinate geometry you should not have to spend a lot of time revising them okay now what i think is really important is using your formula book okay your formula book will be your best friend throughout the exam but what often happens is that people don't know where to find the formulas that they're looking for OK, so there's loads of pages. This is just the first page of the contents page. What we're going to go through is we're going to go through the pages that we actually use for leaving sort of ordinary level maths, because there is an awful lot in this that we do not use. OK, so at the start, you have your formulas for the area and volume. OK, so if your cylinder cone sphere, there is also for a circle. Um, so know how to find these. Um, so A is for area, V is for volume, depending on what you're asked for in the question. So we use all of these. Um, then moving on for the trapezoidal rule is here. OK, um, that comes up in calculus and it also has a diagram here explaining how to use it. Now, quite often that isn't enough for people. They may need to know a little bit more about it. 
but the rule is there. So worst case scenario, if a question comes up about the trapezoidal rule, you write down the formula and you make a stab at it. Okay, because quite often that is all that is needed to get those first couple of attempt marks. Then on to coordinate geometry. So these are super important. So you have your slope, length, midpoint, equation and area of a triangle. If it is a coordinate geometry question, we don't use the last one there for ordinary level. Okay, so your formula is there. Um, just an important note, if you're asked to find the equation of a line, this is the one you use, not the bottom one. Okay, um, so use the top one to find the equation of a line is the easier way to do it. It is technically possible but, but with both, but I always go with the top one to form the equation of a line. Okay, um, then for, we don't use either of those topped formulas, but when you look down here, we have the equation of a circle. Um, we also use, um, there's also more down there, but this is the equation of a circle um, that we use for our coordinate geometry of the circle. Okay, moving on then to page 21, we have our indice formulas here. Okay, people often find that chapter a bit challenging, but learn how to use your formulas and then it may not be too bad. We don't use the logs for ordinary level, so you can ignore all that side of it. Then here we have our patterns ones. So we have the one for our, our, our arithmetic sequence. Um, so that's when there's a constant difference. There is another one that you need to learn off for patterns. Um, so it's for the quadratic one. So Tn is equal to An squared plus Bn plus C. That is not given to you in your formula book. That's one of the few ones you need to learn off. Okay, then we have our final financial maths ones, which is our compound interest and also our depreciation formulas. We don't use the other two. And you have our minus B formula here, very important for solving quadratics, but is also printed on the front page of your cover. Then for trigonometry, we have the area formula. If it's a um, trigonometry question, if it's a coordinate geometry question, we already saw that formula. You have your sine rule. However, with the sine rule, we only use the first two parts. Ignore the C over sine C. Then we have our cosine rule. For down here, we have our sine, cos and tan. However, I tend not to use it like that. And I learn off the rhyme, so Katoa. Okay, so if you learned to use those, that's fine. Um, I just think it's easier to do if you learn off that rhyme, so Katoa. And then sine is opposite over hypotenuse, etc. You also have Pythagoras down there. Most people end up learning that off by heart anyway, because we use it so often. But if you don't know it, it is there for you. Only important thing there, C needs to be the hypotenuse, but they kind of show you that up there. Then that's the end of the formula book. So there's a few that aren't in it. Um, there's a few that you need to learn off by heart, but um, we'll come to those in a second. So one other point is using your calculator. It sounds basic, but um, a lot of mistakes can be made in your calculator and they are annoying marks to lose. So we use our calculator. You can use it for a function table for, fi for finding the points for your functions, finding the standard deviation and correlation coefficient and statistics, minus B formula. The only reason I've that written in there is sometimes people find it hard to put it into their calculator. So just practice on your calculator and using brackets when substituting in a negative number in all chapters. Okay, so brackets are, your cal calculator likes brackets. You're much more likely to ensure you get the right answer if you have brackets. Okay, my only advice, other advice for a calculator would be do not buy a new and different calculator between now and the exams. If you are buying a new one, make sure you buy the same make and the same model. Because if you learn how to do things on one calculator, there are slight variations between them. Okay. And finally, my general tips and advice. So know what formulas are in your formula book and what you need to learn. OK, so the ones jumping straight into my head for what you need to learn. You need to learn the modulus formula in complex numbers, um, the conjugate one as well. Um, you need to learn the um, quadratic formula in patterns. And there are a few more as well. OK, so when you find a formula that you are using um, in a question that you're practicing, check if it is in your formula book or not. Okay, if it isn't, learn it off by heart and learn when to use it. Second point then, know how to use your calculator. Make sure if you're buying a new calculator between now and the exams that you get the same one. Okay, or else learn how to use your new one. Highlight keywords. So there are certain words in maths that mean certain things. So for example, when you are studying coordinate geometry, you need to learn that a point of intersection means you do a simultaneous equation. Okay, so things like that. Um, they're your keywords and you need to learn what keywords are linked up. 
Um, write down any formulas you think might be relevant. You would never know if you, even if you don't know how to continue, you may be lucky enough to get some attempt marks for just writing down the formula. Okay, particularly for things like coordinate geometry, um, patterns, and just make a stab at filling in um, some of the numbers that you think and you will get your attempt marks. Okay, next thing is drawing diagrams. That's more important for trigonometry, um, area and volume, geometry. So diagrams will always help you and you can get some marks for them as well. But on the same note as drawing diagrams, make sure you keep them neat and tidy. Okay. Uh, keep them organized so they will help you with the question and also that so that they'll be readable for the examiner and the last thing I say so some people tend to get carried away and if they give you quite a small box for your answer and you find that your answer needs two a4 pages you are probably on the wrong track okay so what I would say if your work is getting really really long I'd take a breath pause and see okay am I doing this correct or what other method could I use Okay, it is rare that a question will require a huge amount of space. Okay, now that depends on how much you spread out your work and things. But if you find that it's getting really, really long, then I would say you are probably on the wrong track for it. Okay, so that's all for me. Best of luck with your exams. Make sure you know the structure of the paper before you go in. Um, with regards to leaving out topics, I would say in maths, it's a little bit hard to do. But I would be going in at my favourite topics. So as I said, one of my favourite would be complex numbers. I wouldn't be going in without the key points that I've highlighted and the key topics here. Um, everyone will have topics they don't like as much. So when you go into the exam and if you see that topic is in a question, you can try and avoid it. But a lot of maths is linked, so I wouldn't be completely avoiding any topic. Okay, so best of luck in your exam in June and with your study between now and then.